I'm Kate Warren and I'm a professional photographer based in Washington, D.C. I do like cool kid lifestyle stuff. So, because I like to work with people who are working at top of, top of their field and have excellent attention to detail and want, are really concerned with like making very high quality work. Uh, I've always been an artist and I've always been creative and I've always um, been very extroverted. So it turns out that sitting alone in an office writing white papers on policy is not particularly the best fit for me. So I started using photography to meet people. I've been taking pictures since middle school and I found it to be a really great way to connect with individuals and communities. And so I wanted to do that here in DC. So I started taking pictures when I moved down here and I was blogging the images. I was shooting for myself. Uh, and people started paying attention because I was calling out uh, a group of uh, people who live in DC who are outside the norm of what people in the rest of the country see as Washington. You know, there are two cities, right? There's Washington and there's DC. Uh, Washington is the hill. I do not live in Washington. I live in DC. And so I would walk around and see people who had great style, who were very creative, who had interesting jobs and passions, um, and were very diverse. And I started calling out those individuals through portraiture. Uh, and, and the arts community that I was very involved in as well. And so I was blogging those pictures and then the Corcoran hired me as their house photographer. And uh, Washingtonian gave me a digital column. And I, so I was moonlighting full time on top of uh, working 65 hours a week in my day job. Like any creative artistic practice, it's just that, it's a practice. You have to make an absolutely gargantuan body of work to get better. And the only way to close the gap between your taste and your talent is to slog and make a ton of work. And, and it's going to be sort of miserable. And it's the journey to finding your voice or whatever you want to call it. Um, but it really is putting in the time to get better. And so uh, I, as a female, uh, that, pr that process has been um, really wonderful because there is a very involved, robust community of female creatives here in Washington. And I, three years ago I started a, um, a book club of DC creative women and women who work in media, kind of DC power creative ladies. And it, it, to have that community and those resources at hand, that has been extremely valuable to me women photographers are much more willing to make themselves vulnerable in order to make their subjects feel comfortable being vulnerable and I think that makes the work stronger but I think having diverse viewpoints and diverse inputs into projects are really important or like who's to say that um, like for instance I, I am really interested in, in gender and um, gender presentation and I think having those um, perspectives also inform my perception of my gender and how I move through the world and how I make work around those th around gender themes and those the diversity of, of inputs there I think is really important so many populations are being victimized that and we are having these meaningful conversations around intersectionality and showing up for one another in a way that we haven't been doing before. That said, I think there is a, there's a lot of work that can be, there's a lot of progress that can be made, there's a lot of work that can be done. But we need to also be doing as much active listening as possible and understand the, the issues that are relevant uh, to, to populations whose experiences are much different than our own. And, I think normalcy doesn't exist, and I think people who aspire to normalcy are kidding themselves and have some shit to work on. <laughs> so I tend to, because I tend to really embrace um, uniqueness and individualism, both for myself personally and through my work, I seek out other people and communities that do that. Because it's, it's only through having meaningful conversations about our own uniqueness that we expand our perception of ourself, our work, and our connection to our community. And for me, that's a big part of where intersectional feminism comes in. So I think now the conversation around feminism has shifted because white women of privilege are getting woke to the fact that um, 
in order to have conversations about our own vulnerability, we need to be acutely aware and always keep front of mind uh, the intersectionality of, of issues, right? Like we are joining a movement that already existed um, that has been being fought by women of color, by gay people, by immigrants, by you know all of these populations who have been marginalized and that pr privileged women, middle class women, um, who typically have sort of taken over the, the fe feminism conversation uh, have, have a responsibility to be as intersectional and inclusive uh, with these other with these issues because they are all tied. So for us to be um, passionate about developing meaningful solutions, we have to be willing to uh, embrace the intersectionality of the issues. And so for me to be an empathetic, not just an ally, but an accomplice, right? Actively working to help populations that are as vulnerable as women or more vulnerable because they are dealing with intersectional issues. I need to really work hard to understand their experience and come into those interactions um, very open-minded and with no ego as much as possible. I love photography because it is endless, right? If you get bored, you can turn left and do a different kind and take a completely different career path. If you need a lifestyle change, you can turn right and take a totally different path and build a different kind of life for yourself. So it really is a, a choose your own adventure sort of thing. You have to be a self-starter. You have to be very self-motivated. You have to be self-critical because the work has to keep getting better. Um, I would say for people who are interested in coming up specifically in photography, reach out to your community. Build relationships with working photographers, with editors. These are the people who can who get you jobs, but also can help give you feedback on your work at, at a critical time when you are trying to bridge the gap between taste and talent, right? Getting feedback regularly and really uh, creating a space for yourself where you can receive that feedback and make it actionable is the only way that you and the work can continue to get better.